today we'll be talking about the competency standards of the midwife um, that were made by the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Australia. So there's four different domains which we'll each discuss and then within those domains are various elements that are uh, just more, uh, more detailed ways of describing the domains that we will be discussing. So the first domain is the legal and professional practice of the midwife. So basically this means the legal, professional, ethical and reflective frameworks that define midwifery practice. The elements that go underneath this domain are the administration of drugs, consent, documentation and confidentiality, duty of care, accountability and scope of practice. So the legal things that define how we practice. So this particular domain is very, very similar to the Midwifery Code of Conduct, which is another important document from the NMBA. Um, so basically, midwives have to practice safely, legally, effectively, collaboratively, with professional integrity, and in a way that promotes health and well-being. For, an exa for example, um, we have to be competent with the idea of mandatory reporting. So for example, which unfortunately you will come across at some point in your career, a woman might disclose domestic violence to us and as mandatory reporters we legally have to um, report what she has disclosed to us. Another example is confidentiality. So if you're talking about a woman in a public setting which includes the tea rooms of hospitals and social media, never use her name or any identifying information just as a legal requirement of the midwife. The second domain um, in the competency standards is midwifery knowledge and practice. So in a broad sense, this section includes competencies involved in the assessment, planning, um, implementation and evaluation of midwifery care. So um, it's split into two main elements. So the first element is supporting informed decision making of the women that we care for. So um, the most important thing to remember is the provision of um, evidence-based and accurate information that's relevant um, and evidence-based so um, in a way that the woman um, understands as well so um, and in a respectful way based on her needs and her values um, and that it's woman-centered and the second um, big principle of this section um, is practicing in a safe and effective way for all women so that includes um, caring for um, low-risk women, so facilitating normal. So um, that includes, um, you'll cover this in your first year a lot, on the normal mechanisms of pregnancy and birth and the normal physiolo physiology. Um, so supporting that and being able to assess when differentiation from normal occurs. So when that does happen, um, and it does happen, um, being able to identify that and work as a collaborative team um, with other health professionals to be able to care for her within your own scope of practice. So using your ACM national guidelines for consultation and referral are really important and you'll cover that a lot in your second year particularly um, and particularly in relation to emergency care. So being able to identify when a woman say having a postpartum hemorrhage and being able to escalate that appropriately based on um, your scope of practice and your policies of your local hospital or where you're working. So the third domain is midwifery as primary health care. So basically what this means is that midwives play a very important role in promoting health for the woman, her family and the broader community in general. So we have to apply the principle of equity, um, of giving resources to people who need it within our provision of maternity services. So the key elements underneath this domain are the ideas of self-determination, respect for women's rights, supporting and implementing collaborative practice, advocating for midwifery within the public health setting, um, and ensuring that midwifery is culturally safe. So the World Health Organization, you'll do a whole topic pretty much on this in your third year, um, about the World Health Organization's definition of midwifery as the comprehensive, accessible, community-based care that is people-centered. You replace people-centred with woman-centred and you've pretty much got your definition of midwifery. Um, so examples of us acting as primary healthcare workers include um, the screening tests that we perform during pregnancy. So we're screening, we screen for things like anemia, domestic violence and diabetes and then we act upon our findings from these tests. 
Uh, we also vaccinate women. Well, we offer vaccinations to women with low immunity to diseases such as rubella. So this is both primary health, so acting as the first line of defense in health. Um, as another example is promoting healthy eating and healthy lifestyle, stopping smoking. Um, and another important example is the idea of providing resources to those who need them. So giving maternity services on a needs basis is, is um, part of midwifery free um, practice. So women who are Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander have access to services such as AMOS. Um, in the government, this is our way of closing the gap between the health outcomes of Indigenous and non-Indigenous women. Um, and that's that for primary health care. Okay, so the last domain is reflective and ethical practice. Um, so as outlined in the competency standards, this involves practicing in accordance with the NMBA's code of ethics, as well as professional standards and state health privacy obligations. Um, so in the Code of Ethics and the Competency Standards, it outlines the midwife's ability to provide quality care to each woman and their families, and being able to respect their, the diversity of their cultures, their values and beliefs. Um, so additionally, it's also important to acknowledge your own culture, your own values and beliefs, and um, see how these might impact on your own care. Um, so another element is uh, having the skills to reflect on your own midwifery practice which allows you to assess the effectiveness of your care um, and to further improve your professional and personal development as a midwife. Another element, the ability to contribute to um, midwifery involves incorporating the knowledge and skills that you possess and turning that into quality care for women and babies. Um, so this allows not only midwifery but the healthcare system to develop and improve. Um, this domain also involves using your knowledge and um, to contribute to the learning experience of others, um, which helps their professional development, uh, for example, students. Um, another element involves the ability to maintain a current understanding of the latest evidence-based literature and research um, and use this to inform and improve practice decision-making and policy and guideline-making. So a couple of examples, one is caring for a woman um, that is refusing to, get to um, have her baby immunised. Um, although I personally believe that uh, the baby should receive the immunisations, I have to put my own values and beliefs aside um, and provide care that is respectful and non-biased. Um, so all I can do is give her all of the information and allow her, which will allow her to make an informed decision on her own. Another example involves um, improving my own practice based on a past experience. So uh, I was caring for a newborn baby that required resuscitation. I made sure to debrief with others that were involved um, to discuss what was done well and what could be done better next time. Um, I have since ensured that I'm up to date with all of the latest evidence and guidelines regarding newborn resuscitation um, and will use the knowledge and skills that I've learnt to um, help others and teach them.